I'm wet, I'm cold, I'm definitely muddy, but I'm braving all of that to bring you this episode about colour in architecture photography. Let's do it. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK, and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems, and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. I'm not used to this cold. <laughs> I'm really not. It was about a mild 17 degrees when I left uh, Istanbul yesterday. This is about three and it's been pouring down with rain while I've been taking photos this morning. I'm probably gonna have to reshoot a couple because it really was tipping it down so much so that my tilt shift lens wouldn't actually move because there was all water trapped in it and it wouldn't, you know, the friction was too much. I've come all the way to Constanta which is on the coast on the Black Sea, of course, of Romania, to photograph a synagogue this morning. I say all the way, it's actually closer to Istanbul than the capital Ankara. <laughs> so it's not actually that far, really. It's about an hour flight. And this is a place that I've wanted to photograph for years. I first came to Romania in 2015, and I always wanted to photograph this place. But on that particular trip, we were in the west of Romania, and we were only here for a few days. And it was a long way to head across the country to get here. However, it doesn't matter because today I've timed it probably better, apart from the rain this morning, that was a nightmare. Um, it's beautiful, actually. The colours are starting to turn in here. It's all overgrown. Vegetation, as you saw in the intro here. Amazing red started to appear. This actually isn't uh, the only time I'm going to be in Romania in the next 12 months. I'm actually planning to do off the beaten path photography tours here in Romania, probably west and east, over the next two years. So I'm gonna start having to recce, it might even be longer than that, but actually I'm gonna to have to start recce in the country in full and seeing what's accessible and what's not and see if we can make some contacts along the way. Keep an eye out for those. They're gonna be obviously released in due course. I'm hoping the first one will be as, as close as June next year. Um, and if things are as I think they are, there might only be a couple of places left on that already. So yeah, keep an eye out for those. I don't talk about them very much on this channel, but I should much more. In our first location on this trip, I've chosen to come to this synagogue right here with you to talk about colour. And the reason why is look at the colours around me. They're absolutely magical. There's all kinds. I mean, you've got a little bit of backlighting so you can't see everything. And that's the point here. I'm going to talk about how we're going to photograph emphasize, protect the colours and bring the best out of them in those raw files that we're shooting. And of course we're shooting raw, right? I think we all do that at this point, surely. Hopefully. We definitely do in architecture photography. Let's crack on. First of all, the colours in here are fantastic at the moment. There's this fruit growing on the leaves, as you can see here. There's also red tones in all the vegetation and the backdrop of the synagogue, the, board, or the wall there with all the blues and the yellow tones is, is of course fantastic. You can kind of see some of them in the camera's position as well. One of the key things 
that of course helps maintain colors in the architecture images. This one's different because actually, of course there's no roof. We're not really in an interior. This is kind of an exterior. However, again, timing is, plays a huge part. Of course it's overcast. Well, it's not just overcast, it's freezing. I think I've talked about that, have I? I think I've talked about that already. But being overcast, like it is today, plays a huge part in maintaining a lot of them colors, or at least helping us alleviate and pull the colors out of our raw file. Our settings don't really change for this as usual. I'm not gonna talk really about settings at all today. I'm just gonna give you those tips on how we're gonna maintain these colors. Now, first of all, if there was bright light coming in here, cascading in through this open roof, half and half, of course, some of our lighting is gonna be weird and that's gonna take away from a lot of our color. But because we've timed it quite well in the winter, we've got overcast conditions, that's gonna help us maintain those colors. If anything, it's gonna help us bring out the colors a little bit in post as well. If you have st strong light, flare, lens flare, or any sun flare, or even maybe dust in your scene, that's all usually, not always, but usually gonna take away from the sharpness of the image and then make the colors appear a lot flatter, you know, softer. So the first question I'd ask you, if that's the case, if you have got harsh lighting in your scene, which fortunately for us today, we do not, like I say, but if you do, could you photograph it at a different time? Could you return later in the day, the month, or even another time all, you know, all together? If you're on a trip, could you return to the location earlier, later, different season, if you live locally? These are all questions you should definitely ask yourself because it's definitely better to capture seven, maybe eight great images on a trip than it is to capture thousands that are all mediocre. So as long as we have timed everything correctly, we are here at the right time of year, the right time of day, the right season, then that means now all we need to do is select the right aperture, select the right settings and get it right in camera, not overexposing to be able to bring out the best in the file and emphasize those colors or at least maintain them to be able to bring them out in post. The other thing as well is you wanna make sure that you're not getting your settings wildly wrong. Because what that will do is overexpose, underexpose your image dramatically, won't have the sharpness where you want it. And of course that would then all take away from the color. And what I mean by that is if you've overexposed your image, it will tend to look a bit more washed out, a bit brighter, and the colors will not pop as much in post. So So what I've photographed here is five brackets, not for any reason other than we've got a lot of, not massive dynamic range, but I wanna make sure that in post, I've got an option for all of the different brackets and look at which one has the best color maintained within it. I will then probably just select the three to combine together, one for the foreground, the midground, and the background to be able to then pull the best of the colors out of this scene. And there is a lot in here. I mean, look at the different colors. There's, there's many. I'm also gonna take a photo with my 24 mil, not my 17 as well. I've got my camera up here, by the way, to get over the vegetation. That's why it's so high. I'm standing on some bricks. My lens is still full of water from this morning. So why is that affecting your things? Well, it's in the moving part of the tilt shift. So when I'm moving up and down, it's actually like frictioning, which is <laughs> proper annoying. So the other thing I've got to do here myself is just watch out for the wind. I 
This one's for the Instagram. Link's just here. <laughs> Not that it really matters. It's actually a beautiful shot I've wanted for a long time, like I said at the start of this. Um, and it's going to do very well in terms of, hopefully, getting that end up on the website. As long as I get those colours right. And finally, post-processing, of course. Now, um, fine art architecture photography like this, you can be a little bit more aggressive than you can say in other genres of photography, or even in commercial architecture for that matter. Um, you can be a bit more punchy with your colors, you can pull out tones, and of course apply your style onto the images much more. That's the whole point of fine art, right? There's a few things we can do to emphasize the colors and pull them out in post. And I'm gonna talk about those over in Lightroom in a second. But some of those things include the clarity within reason, dehaze, contrast, of course, the different HSL color tab in Lightroom as well. Let's jump over and have a quick look at those. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. And I've got, first of all, for you, the five brackets that I took um, with ISO 400, as my sort of base ISO in camera over in Romania. When we're looking at color here, we want to try and look at a couple of things. And I know that, for instance, that those two are of course too dark to lift the shadows. The colors are gonna be a bit washed out and not gonna look great. So instantly we can remove these photos. So let's get rid of those. The next thing that we're gonna to look to do is check these other two files here. So this one is 100, one over 200 of a second. And if I lifted the shadows here, lifted the overall exposure, it should look absolutely fine. But the thing is, is if that's the only file we have, we could work with it. But I know for a fact that the next one is better. The other one, the third one, is a bit too bright because we've got a little bit washed out here in the, uh, you know, the background of the image on the main focus point. And it's only a 50th of a second. So some of our vegetation is also moving because the shutter speed is not fast enough. So it's not sharp enough. So even if we brought our exposure down here, you can see that yes, we're maintaining the color, but we're also got movement in the vegetation and we're gonna then have to lift this again to get the colors out of it. It's not gonna be maintaining the best possible quality, especially if we know we've got another version. So we'd also get rid of this. So then we're down to two and out of those two, we know that this one, ISO 400, uh, we've got some movement here that we just need to check. No, that's fine. So we've got basically a pretty decent file, F8, one over uh, a hundredth of a second, and we're basically looking decent. You know, there's not big issues in the, in the foreground. If we started editing this file here, we'd have some great results out of it. So that's basically then what I've done. It's okay, so we're just gonna leave the bracketed shots, and we're gonna go into a different folder for edits. And I've pre-prepared something to speed this video along a little bit. Here we've got the actual raw file. As you see, it's uh, pretty dull, pretty flat, but there is yellows maintained at least. It looks quite, you know, this is the one that we selected, it's exactly the same settings. What I then did was the following to bring this to life. So you can see the, the comparison, it's a huge difference. And of course, these colors are maintained within the file. If I actually go into the develop module, there's a bunch of stuff that we can look at here. The things that were really important to make this work, of course, temperature's kind of like personal choice thing, really. I've kind of boosted this up to the original was here and that's absolutely fine, but I sort of made it a little bit warmer, but not much. I've, of course, boosted the exposure overall. The most important thing in this section is whites and blacks work in combination to make an image kind of pop, like especially in architecture, you can pull the whites up crush the blacks down and that's not much, but you can really really make an image kind of boost it and stand out. The whites are making a huge difference here um, in terms of trying to do that, trying to make the image kind of stand out. But the most important one for this particular image was those shadows, I needed to lift them. And I've boosted it by 35 look, but actually that was where it originally was. And if I put the 35 on, I think we can all agree that that's a much better look. You want some sort of detail underneath these arches. The next two most important things are luminance and saturation. I don't get carried away with the saturation. And the reason why is because I want more control than this. This is a bit, this is a bit heavy. It's a bit global. 
It's a very global adjustment. So I'm not going to mess about with that too much at all. I do boost the vibrance over all of this image and you can see here I boosted it by 35 and that's made a, a difference from there which isn't loads it's a little bit more I suppose subtle the vibrance the most important one though without a shadow of a doubt usually when you go down here you've got color selected if you go to HSL you've got three tabs that open hue saturation luminance and in hue we can actually change the hues of the colors and in particular, if you look at these greens, look at this. When you bring the greens much more towards green, you can get those colors back much more towards where they were in the field. The same applies to the reds. Look at the reds. You can really like fine tune them, you know, down to a small detail. In combination with boosting the saturation of said colors and also the luminance is pretty important. You can make that pop. You can make it look like they are wet again by brightening up individual colors or, or reducing them down. So again, oranges tends to be a bit more overall because there's a lot of orange in this scene. Again, look at the yellow. Look at that. You can really maintain the colors in this, make it pop by just keeping it kind of that one, to be honest, where you don't need much at all. Probably just down a little bit. Greens though, pretty important. Look at this. We want to bring this up make them pop make it stand out same again on the aquas there's a little bit of aquas in here and the rest is is fine like the magentas again same thing there's going to be a few magentas in there and some of them you might want them to be a bit more purple we pull this down same on the purples and that's it great location choice for color though wasn't it i think you find i hope you've enjoyed it um and i'll see you again next week from here in romania i'm trying to feel maybe i don't know We'll see, we'll see how we get on. Two videos a day, so it should give me six videos or mini series, but I'll try my best. Sometimes things do go wrong in these locations, unfortunately, but I hope you've enjoyed that one. Leave any comments if you've got them below. If you've got any questions, please do reach out to us. Uh, I enjoy hearing from you all. It's been a pleasure. Of course, hit the bell notification, subscribe, and you'll be alerted next week when I upload. These last videos have been clashing with the World Cup, of course, which isn't ideal. Um, but we're keeping it consistent and that's all that matters. Until next week, enjoy the rest of your weekend and bye for now.